A 17-0 fourth quarter run, a frame in which Boston ruthlessly outscored Golden State 40-16. We looked at every play down the stretch in the fourth quarter yesterday. Go watch that upload after this. Click the link in the description to do so or the top right. That video covers the heroic efforts from Jalen Brown and Derek White, which the comeback wouldn't have been possible without. What we didn't go over was how Boston flipped a switch defensively in the fourth quarter, with even 8-mile Peyton Pritchard locking up, plus how coach Ime Udoka put Tatum on Curry, and how the reach of Jason seemed to bother Steph. Boston's mid-game adjustments, Jason Tatum setting the all-time record for the most assists in a finals debut, Marcus Smart setting the tone with his shot making plus leadership, and most importantly, Big Al Horford's versatility to beat Kevon Looney up in transition and make the most threes from a player ever in their finals debut were winning factors that greatly contributed to Game 1's blistering fourth quarter as well. The Boston Celtics owned the Warriors when it mattered most, so was it a statement win, or was it like Draymond said, and Golden State shouldn't be worried? Before continuing, only 10.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds, makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The University of California Berkeley product in Jalen Brown is currently making a name for himself on the biggest stage, but given how he torched my Raptors in the bubble a few years ago, from my standpoint, I've known this man to be an assassin on the court for several years now. Proving himself as one of the clutchest players in today's game, Brown's leading the playoffs in fourth quarter points. He's shooting 10.6% better from the field than the rest of the top 10 fourth quarter scores. And Jalen's also shooting 25.6% better from three in that final frame than any other player. When JB scored or assisted on damn near every bucket to kick off the last quarter in game one of 2022's finals, the basketball world learned how lethal of an offensive threat he truly is. It's enough hating on the man for his ball handling, as while that can improve, Brown's got a lethal combination of Tracy McGrady-esque perimeter shooting and LeBron James-esque athleticism, which he needs to be praised for before haters start talking about his handle. When Jalen's cooking, there's about nothing any defender can do about it. In terms of the C's other top player, despite missing 14 of his 17 field goals, Jason Tatum not only had a career-high 13 assists, but he had 19 potential assists and accounted for 47 points. On the other end, he guarded 82 partial possessions, letting up just 10 points on 3-for-10 shooting, and he also forced two turnovers. For everyone who's saying the Celtics role players aren't going to shoot like they did again and the Game 1 result was just a fluke, you're forgetting Jason's going to have a much better performance on Sunday, and also a typical top role player in Grant Williams can also play a lot better. Highlighting the team's mentality after stealing home court on the road, Tatum said post-game, Our last two series we lost Game 1. This time of the season you feel great when you win and you feel terrible after you lose. You got to be able to stay mellow, stay balanced, especially this early. It's far from over. It's just one game. We got to be ready for them to respond, as if we would if we lost the first game. Not only is Jalen Brown extremely reliable in the clutch, but the Jays as a duo can execute with the best of them when the pressure is at its highest. The Boston Celtics have scored 530 points in the fourth quarter in these playoffs, with Tatum and Brown combining for 244 of those points. They're also shooting 57% from the field and 58% from three to close out games. In terms of defensively, Rob Williams was in far too low of a drop coverage to kick off this game, and it resulted in a historically dominant quarter from Curry. Celtics coach Ime spoke on the defense postgame, saying, Our switches were aggressive. At times, our bigger guys were getting caught too low, especially when Curry was getting going early, so we wanted to go with a smaller unit and get more aggressive on the ball. In terms of the adjustments, Udoka said, quote, A lot of small, small. We did some pre-switching to keep our bigs out of the actions, took some time off the clock, and then, this is what we can rely on all year, our one-on-one -on -one defense. Guys clamped in better, more physicality, more awareness on shooters and taking up some space. That seemed to wear them down a little bit. Lastly, another quick but important message from Udoka was when he said, quote-unquote, We didn't play our best at all. As the game progressed, the stunting, switching, activity with hands in the passing lanes, plus the overall hustle, help, and ball denial 
ultimately put too much pressure on the Warriors creators for them to handle. Then there's Big Al, and we'll see if he can stay consistent in these finals, but the Godfather's dominant fourth quarter bucket getting made Horford the primary factor to the Celtics 17-0 blitzing and all around fourth quarter domination of the Dubs. With Draymond unable to answer his production, Al's mobility, whether in transition or in the half court, along with his ball movement, and you can't forget about the sound defense, all of those elements were significantly better than his counterpart in Dre. Maybe the volumes Draymond can get it going, but as Green would even tell you, Horford deserves all the flowers after this game one. When Al was waiting for free throws right here, he got the treatment of the LeBron James Game 6 Miami Heat meme, and rightfully so. Al's been one of basketball's best stretch big men over the last decade plus, and one of the primary reasons I had faith in the C's getting to the finals, with several videos of mine predicting just that, was the legs I saw him getting into with his shot, and all around his commitment and focus to this group I saw him have was influential in me picking the Celtics to win the title. Horford has such an elusive yet easily repeatable and extremely high release point on his jumper, and when he's got the rhythm, grip, backspin, not to mention a wide open look, that shot's going to fall more often than not. I can't stress to you enough how Horford's prolific spacing at the 5 spot means everything to this Celtics team. It's amazing all it took GM Brad Stevens to make Al a second time Celtic was trading Kemba Walker and a few draft picks to Oklahoma Tank City, but whether it was acquiring Horford and coach Ime Udoka last summer, or trading Josh Richardson for Derek White, looking back on it from this year's finals, I want to know in your opinion, who was GM Brad Stevens' biggest cop of 2021-22 season? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Swoo. Pause to read his answer along with the honorable mentions. I really appreciate you guys showing the love on my videos like you have been over the last few weeks and months. You guys are the best. Keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. I really appreciate you guys. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.